Good morning. Happy post 4th of July. I hope you've got all your fingers. Uh, to those that don't celebrate the 4th of July, sometimes we like to blow ourselves up to celebrate the stopping of us blowing ourselves up. Every July 4th, we let off fireworks, sometimes safely, sometimes not, sometimes very drunk. I did not do any of those things. <laughs> In fact, um, on Alum Creek, there was a fireworks show that looked like a grand finale, but it lasted a total of an hour. And then the grand finale was so intense. And this was like two, three, three miles away as the crow flies. Super intense, super stupid, very annoying. Cats were all incredibly frightened and huddling down. I'm sure everybody's dogs were very upset. I, I like drone shows now. Um, I, I don't really ever think, there was a point when I liked fireworks and then I worked at the Blitz and spent two 4th of Julys uh, down at Red, White and Boom, attempting to navigate in, around and then out of that utter chaos nut fest. And uh, it was awful. It was absolutely awful and it gave me a terrible late game core memory. I, I uh, not really a big fireworks fan. Plus I see what it does to pets and that's, it makes me sad. Here's the Timor from the Island Roasters. That beautiful walnut and dark chocolate. It's funny how a nut can be creamy, especially when you just take it out of the shell. Walnuts are so incredibly creamy. I, they're, they're amazing. I, they're great. I love walnuts. 40 grams this time. I think I did that last time when I did, uh, when I did the old pot here. Ooh, that's very close. I like that. And I did the old uh, French press here. The French hold. We're gonna call it the French hold. It's the French hold now. A couple of fun things, I guess, we can talk about. First off, the mundane. Not mundane, but fun. This is called a cheese dome. And of course, this is from Bell's Bread. We were there this past weekend. It's 20% off because this was in the ugly bin. If they make things, they make them, they cook them through, but they come out looking not as desirable, they put them in a bin and mark them 20% off. Um, I'll tell you right now, and anyone that's had a grandmother, a grandmother that can cook like nobody's business, the great, greatest cook you had ever experienced up until the, the, the first time you ever went to a, you know, like a seafood restaurant or something like that in your late 20s, that's relatable she makes something and she's like, oh, I screwed that up. And she goes, throw it away. And you're like, no, don't throw that away. Even the screw ups are the most amazing things you've ever had. And it's the same with Bell's Bread. And they, and they kindly put their mistakes out. Cause you see kind of a little overbaked right here, I guess you would say, if you were a baker. Um, a little bit browner down here, I guess. A little bit of brown spots there cause it was overbaked. I, I don't give a crap, they taste amazing. So what these things are, is they are a pastry, it's like a sweet pastry, um, more like a donutty, I guess, texture, but you open this thing up, and it, and it is, it's very moist around the outside here, but inside here, at the very top, is cheese. And you can kind of see it there. And it's just, the, it's the best flavor. It's like almost, it's not too sweet, it's almost a little sour, and you got all this donut here. Yeah, oh boy. Mm-hmm, it's delicious. And definitely not good for you. Mm. So nice. But you know, they call it, they call them ugly because like that one, I guess you would say it's a little too brown for them. And uh, you know, kind of smooshed down a little bit, uh, kind of collapsed a little bit more than the normal cheese dome would. So they call that ugly. And like I said, if you have a parent or you have a grandparent, you know, that, that was an amazing baker and she's like, oh, I gotta throw these cookies out for whatever reason. You're like, wait, 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 let me look at them first before you throw them out so that I can see if for me, they're bad. <laughs> so, all right, next thing after we do this, I'm gonna put this down. We'll put it down to a 20. We'll do about a medium fine here. And a bean that refuses, absolutely refuses. Hang on, let me try starting it again. Look at it. It must be a, a really good size and shape to where 
or it's hard as a damn rock. Oh, there it went. It did not want to give up the ghost, that is for sure. All right, so let's see here. I'm going to put you right there. We'll zero you out. Check over here. Almost there. And... Mm -hmm. Ugh. I haven't had coffee in a couple of days, so this will be wonderful. Let's get you in here. Put 39. There we go. Okay, so that's... It's recovered a little bit. I must have tapped the side. So we lost point, according to this, 0.4 grams uh, coming out of the uh, grinder. Just absolutely fine. Again, smells amazing. So what we're gonna do is, I've got 40 grams of coffee in here with my hot water which is now hot, I will stream in uh, about 500 grams of water. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we get out of this here. No need to bloom. Um, I will get a spoon out and I will give it a good stir just to make sure all of the grounds are incorporated into the water. But there is no need to prime the pump. Ow, that is hot. Um, we are just getting the water in here. All right, we're getting close. There's a big unwetted coffee ground over there. Okay, a little bit more than I wanted, but that's okay. Spoonage. Give it a stir here. Oh boy, that is just, there we go. Get her all incorporated here. We are gonna let this sit for around four minutes. We're gonna see what it does. Anything that doesn't fall to the bottom, we are gonna scoop out with this spoon and then we are gonna let it sit for another five minutes. Uh, the five minutes will include the scooping out of the spoon. So in total, it'll be about nine minutes of it getting all the flavor out of the coffee. Anyhow, so the next thing, I am going to be writing a joke for the next Rift Track show. Now, some of you are like, well, that's cool. Some of you are like, what? So, if you remember back in the day, there was a show called Mystery Science Theater 3000. And if, you've, if you're a friend of mine, or if you've been on the channel for a while, and if you've watched a couple of videos, you know that I'm a big fan of Mystery Science Theater. I'm a big fan of Rift Tracks. Um, but Mystery Science Theater back in the day was a show that aired, I don't know, what was it about? How many seasons was it? 10, 11, se many seasons, a lot of seasons uh, through Comedy Central and then through Sci-Fi. Before that, it was in Minnesota. I believe it was Minnesota, KTMA, I think it was. All, all of it's fuzzy. Um, but basically it's a dude and two robots who are puppets talk back to a movie screen. Um, so basically, they're, and, and go to YouTube, if you've never seen one, or if you need a refresher, go to YouTube, search MST3K, you will find a plethora of things, shorts, a two hour thing that they put out of shorts, uh, <laughs> you know, just a bunch of stuff. And it's, it's funny and incredible, and when you find the right one, you fall in love. You just do. Some of them are hit and miss, because the jokes don't always land for people that are outside of their circle. You know, that's just, but sometimes you just do jokes for you and your friends, even if it's to a wide public audience. Uh, but there's a couple that are just instant classics. They did a couple of Godzilla and Gamera movies um, when they were allowed to. Now I think Toho is a little bit more grabby about their, about their stuff. I don't think that they've really ever released the Toho stuff. I think they may have released it on VHS, but uh, we haven't seen them on shelves in a very long time. Should I stir this first? And then stuff that doesn't get, fall, get knocked down to the bottom? Because there's an awful lot on the top there. I think I stir it first and then anything that's left, I will, yeah, let's do that right now then. Just give it a little bit of a stir. Break the crust, that's what it is. You break the crust and then the stuff that falls down that's exactly what it is. I'm remembering it as it was told to me via video. 
Okay, so break the crust, let it go for another couple of seconds, and then we'll start scooping. There's a lot of foam on the top there too. That's very interesting. I wonder why that is. Back to what I was saying to start with. So they uh, every year, I think for the past almost over 10, over 10 years maybe, they've done um, Kickstarters. So, and a Kickstarter is uh, you have a business or you have a small business, you want to do something larger that benefits not only yourself monetarily, but benefits others. So you create this Kickstarter on a website and people pledge, people pledge money. And if you reach your goal or exceed your goal, they collect the money that you've pledged. So I pledged an amount of money. Maybe I'll talk about it, maybe I won't. I mean, I was, yeah, but um, I pledged an amount of money and I'm able to write a joke for the show that's coming up Tuesday, August the 17th is when that's happening. And it's a Fathom event, so it'll be theaters around you that do Fathom events. More than likely they will be doing the show. But they've been doing this for years now, and I have pledged to um, maybe all but one, because after the first one, I wasn't making as much, so it was definitely a labor of, you know, saving money to do this, because I wanted to do it. I went to the uh, a Son of VIP event with Riff Tracks, was the first one. And all of the consecutive ones have been um, VIP events where I've been able to save up money or have gotten a bonus and have used that bonus to uh, put forth money to go see them. And what's been really nice is that they remember us. And you know, a lot of people are like, well, that's not a big deal. They should remember you, you're paying them money, but that's not, not, not the point. The point is somebody that I, or a group of people that I have come to know, remember me, uh, that are, you know, that are doing what I would love to do, at least even part-time, that I admire and care about, you know. It's, it, that's, just, that's just the mindset. The mindset is that I care about these people, they've been a part of my life for a very long time, and they remember my name. You know, that's a big deal. It's a big deal to some people. Um, you know. <sighs> It's, it is, and you know, these people, Bill, Kevin, Mike, Connor, Sean, Eric, you know, it's just the, 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 those are the people just off the top of my head that have, you know, since I've met them, big impact on my life, watching them do their jobs and do their jobs well and, you know, work through things. And it's just, it's just wonderful. And it, um, you know, it's just, it's to have them remember us because we both go is a big deal to me, you know? So, so I'm writing a joke, um, which, and also if you've d deep dived on my channel a little bit, you see I've done some riffs. Best, biggest one that I'm most proud of is the, the From Russia With Love riff that I did um, on the channel. Um, it's just the audio. I can't, it's not like I can upload the entire From Russia With Love movie. So it's just basically my audio riff with some lines mixed in so that you can keep it uh, in sync when you're watching the movie. But, um, so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm writing a riff and I'm very excited. I did it last year. Um, they did Return of Swamp Thing, which is an absolutely abysmal movie. Um, they, it was wonderful. They had, it was very funny. Uh, they did a wonderful job and then they did my joke. And then for like a minute and a half, I couldn't hear anything else because they did my joke live to an audience and it just blew my mind. I'm like, I wrote that, that's my joke. I did that and now it's being told on a big screen. That's huge. Uh, for someone like me, that's huge. I need a cup. So that's happening and I need to, I need to watch the movie. I need to write, because you submit five jokes and they pick one. Um, so I need to watch the movie and I need to sit down and do that. I'll probably end up doing that today, this afternoon, because it needs to be submitted by August the 1st and we're going on vacation very soon. So, which is a whole nother thing um, that I can get into tomorrow. But um, for right now, you know, Riff Tracks, you know, is, is, one, is a wonderful thing. And I am incredibly, completely, and totally biased. I just am. Um, every experience I've had with all of the, the entire group, the entire company that is Riff Tracks, you know, everything I've ever done with them has been fantastic. You know, so I, it, it is a dream. It is, it is a dream and I don't mind giving to a Kickstarter to hear my words spoken 
by either Bill or Kevin or Mike on a big screen. You know, that's, that to me is like the epitome of amazing. So that's happening. Um, I just need to, I just need to write five jokes. Actually, last year I submitted five jokes and then I submitted five more underneath that just in case they, you know, thought that, but they, they, they got the, they took the nostalgia joke that, uh, again, the, the more of the kind of insider joke, they took that and used it. So that was, that was pretty cool. I was really, really happy to, to hear it. But that's happening, so that's another big thing that's happening relatively quickly. And, and we're gonna go down and we're gonna go watch it. We're gonna go watch it live um, in Nashville, which is <laughs> fantastic. I mean, it's just, it's just weird. All the, the terrible thing that, the terrible thing, terrible thing that happened, you know, in, in January where I got laid off, you know, and all of these nice things are happening still, you know, I mean, it's, it's not the end of the world. When one bad thing happens to you, it's not the end of the world, you know? When one, dev one thing you consider devastating happens to you, it's not the end of the world. And I think that that's, you know, that's pretty positive, I think, you know, it's not the end of the world. It, it may seem like it, and you can mourn it, but realize that it's not the end of the world. Okay, before this thing uh, overheats, Let's get our coffee on here. Uh, as again, like I did the first time and showed you, um, I've got it stopped at the top. I didn't press through um, for that explanation. Yeah, you can check out that video, but briefly, if I push down, it's gonna push all the coffee around it and there's a bigger chance that it's gonna go through this filter. So I'm just gonna lay it on the top and allow the coffee to pass through it and there's less chance that I will get stuff at the bottom. I almost said shit at the bottom. Oops. So we're gonna give it a nice little pour here. Lovely, look at that, mmm. Beautiful Tamor. Mmm. So delicious, mmm. So much walnutty goodness. And how does it taste with a sticky pastry? Oh, wow, okay, yep. I'm not gonna say that's the way to drink it, but I'm gonna say that is a way to drink it. <laughs> Very good. Cool, I'm gonna finish that, I'm gonna finish this. Thanks so much for watching this morning. I will try to remember tomorrow to talk about um, the trip um, that's coming up for us. I won't say anything now because I've already gone a little too long. I uh, kinda wanna try to keep these short, but you know, sometimes you just can't. Sometimes you just wanna go and go and go and go and go and just talk, especially when, you know, I mean, last week it was bad because they were paving the road out, out here on phase two. So it was just wall to wall noise for two days. And then they were mowing. And again, just the noise level was off the charts. And I'm like, I can't do anything in here with all of that craziness. So, um, and they're starting up again for whatever reason. It sounds like they're, they're mowing again today up, up, up north. Or it's the neighbor and they've got their blower out and they're blowing stuff, which is highly, highly likely because I live with old people that are very entitled. Not all of them, certainly not all of them, but a couple of them. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.